KCM Wealth Management. Vancouver Lawyers, Dumoulin Boscovich. The Vancouver Courier Newspaper. David and Mark Goodman. We're talking about service. How would you recognize good service if you ever found it in Canada? Well, that's a bit of a teaser because, of course, there are people who deliver wonderful service, but there are an awful lot of people in Canada who don't get the idea at all, uh, which is why they keep going out of business. Uh, I, I remember vividly Ted Topping is our guest, and uh, his company is called uh, Creative Insights, Insights, Inc., and he teaches how to give good service to lots of people. We'll talk about how he does that in a minute. But I remember vividly one of the great mainstays of Vancouver, Woodward's, mm -hmm. and I went in to pay a bill, and... There was a long lineup, and all the wall, on the wall was a sign, our mission statement, and it was all about service. But at the counter to pay the bills, there were one or two people, and there were like eight people waiting. And when I finally got to pay my bill, I said, have you ever read that statement? <laughs> I'm sure they loved you. Yeah, yeah. Well, guess who went out of business the next year? Yeah. You yeah. Know, hello? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's, well, let's talk about the difficulty of training people because uh, uh, a major shift happened about 30 years ago. We started to see employees that you could not say anything to. You couldn't say, a genie, you took two hours for lunch. We don't do that here. You're an hour late. Because genie would go, yeah, so, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> how do we teach service to people who, like, you know, like, I've got to go. Well, probably I wouldn't have hired Genie in the first <laughs> yeah. place. That would be a but good But the good problem place to is, start. Ted, there's a, there's a million Genies right now. But you picked yeah. up, David, I think that 30 years ago, Milestone, yeah. that, that's highly significant, and this is, this is the reason why. Please. Uh, about 30 years ago, we started to see the entrance into the workforce yes. of the baby boom echo. Uh, These, this is Gen Y, if yeah, you prefer, yeah. the millennials, if you want to call them that, but essentially they are the children of the baby boomers. Key number one, the baby boom is the largest demographic cohort in Canada. As you know, it's almost one-third of the Canadian population. Right. Well, they didn't have quite as many kids as there were of them, just a little less than yeah. two. So they're actually in the millennials. There's a little bit less than a third of the population. But that is the second largest uh, identifiable group in the population are people who are now 35 and under. So they've been in the workforce about yes. 15, about 20 years, something like that. And I think what's different is the values are different. It's the core values, the way that we have been brought up, the things that we have experienced. For example, I would question whether most people under 25 have ever experienced customer service in the way that you're referring to it. Yes. They simply have never seen it. They wouldn't know what to copy. So that would be point one. But point two, and this is one of the things where I, I really emphasize in my workshops and presentations, the difficulty is the business owner who did a value uh, statement, yes. who did a mission statement, as yes. you said, for, yes. for the department store, who perhaps even got into a few basic things, you know, but in the end, that's where the process stopped. They put a plaque on the wall, or they put a sign on the wall, or yeah. they put it in the employee handbook, and they never did anything with it. We're gonna come to Disney in a minute, in yeah. a minute but um, one of the things they do is that they have four very identifiable service standards that flow directly from the values yes. and from the mission, and now we have four service standards. And those four service standards tell employees exactly how to make any decision that's facing them 
so that they are in line with the values of the organization. That's yeah. what was missing at Woodward, yeah. and that's what is missing, I would guess, at about 80% of the businesses where you find unsatisfactory service. Uh, my son is the uh, manager of a very famous, very popular uh, cafe, uh, to re remain unnamed. It's packed all the time. They do great business, as they should, right. because of what they give. The employees are all kids in their 20s, mm -hmm. and the cafe theoretically closes at one. If someone walks in, if a customer walks in at 1250, my son's staff start crying, start kvetching, whining. Oh, what are they doing? Don't they know we close at one? And he has to patiently explain that if they're still eating until 115 mm -hmm. or 130, that's income for us, and that assures you of having a job tomorrow. That's how, how we stay in business. E excuse me. The yeah. difference in the values, though, because the yeah. millennials yes. have watched the baby boomers. They've watched very many of us burn out, yeah. uh, throw our lives away in pursuit of the <laughs> almighty dollar and yes. climbing the yeah. corporate ladder. Yeah. And our children, thankfully, yeah. I think, have come up and are saying, I want to have a more balanced life. Okay. I want to have time for work, but I also want to have time for my friends, I want to have time for recreation, I want yeah. to have time just to kick back and cheer the Canucks. Yeah. And there's nothing inherently wrong with that. I would go back again to the hiring when we talked about Jeannie, the, yeah, the, yeah. the person, yeah. and the question is, what values did she exhibit in the hiring interview, and were those values in line with what the owner was looking for and what he or she wanted that business to represent. Let me talk for, let you talk, please, for a moment about the responsibility of the customer. There's two things that I do regularly because I'm such a, a whiner about things. <laughs> I, if, if I get bad service, I speak up and I say this was yes. bad service. Good but for let, you. let me assure you, when I get good service, I write letters, I send emails, I say thank you, I say it to people's faces. Yeah. I have a lifelong friend, a delightful woman, uh, retired, lives in West Van, sends me birthday cards, all kinds of New Year's cards and so on. Because a thousand years ago, she was working at the Bay, and she helped me, and she was beyond the pale in the way she helped me. And I sent a note to her manager, mm -hmm. to her boss, and said, this is a rare bird, treat her right. Good and, for and you. And we've been lifetime, lifetime friends. Good for you. Yeah. Um, just before I came in today, yeah. I was yeah. reading a, a letter. It's from a, a, an associate of mine. His name is Jeff Kober. He's the uh, co-facilitator. That's right, co-facilitator yeah. of Perfecting the Customer Experience, the yes. workshop we do at Disneyland. Yeah. And one of the consulting projects that Jeff has worked on for about five years is the city of Sammamish, ah, which is yeah, the yeah. this is the bedroom community for all of the Microsofties down in Redmond. Redmond. Okay. Yeah. They work yeah. in Redmond. They live yeah. in Sammamish. Yeah. And basically, what he sent me was a 23-page document of letters that the city had gotten about their various employees who were caught doing something right. In other words, they have introduced customer service as a value in the city. This, to is, a something, city government. this is something that we want as yeah. a city government. We want to give customer service. And the letters that are there, there's 23 of them, but I'll tell this story very quickly. Um, a, a city engineering uh, fellow had been out in the street with his partner, they were doing some work, and they found this dog, young dog. It wasn't an old dog at all, just a yeah, young yeah. dog, very yeah, active yeah. in hyper high traffic area of the city. They look around, they couldn't find the owner, so they picked up the dog, put it in the city truck. They spent one hour driving around trying to see if they could spot where the owner was looking for somebody looking yeah. for the dog. They couldn't. They took it back to the city office, and then somebody else said, you know what? we should take this to the vet, this dog to yeah. the vet, and we'll have it scanned, see if there's a chip somewhere that'll yeah, identify yeah. the dog. They took it to the vet. There was no chip. The vet said, I'll keep the dog overnight, you know, and then tomorrow we'll yeah. take it to the pound. Well, the, the guy said, no, that isn't yeah. how we should treat this dog. So they took it back to the city office where employee number three took the dog and took it, was going to take it to her home and keep the dog overnight. Meanwhile, they had listed it on Craigslist. The phone rings. Boom. Boom, there it is. It was there about a 90 minutes to an hour 45 later that the city employees, three city employees, got the owner's dog back to the owner. Beautiful. And that's just one example of the type of customer service the city can I, I give. Went, I went into the city tax office here in Vancouver uh, about a year and a half ago, and this gal helped me with a problem. You know, because I'm hopeless with things like taxes. I don't understand them. And so, sure, sure. Uh, I, willfully, so I try to not understand. And, and when she was finished doing whatever she did, I said, may I see your manager? And she looked 
like this was a real she said of course and the guy came over and I said you see this young lady pay her twice what you're paying her she's a she's treasure good. she's a treasure mm -hmm. she's the best this is what she just did for me I'm stupid in this area she made it very clear she did it with a sweet attitude you need more of her I think that people are fundamentally good. I oh, mean, well, yeah, my, my belief yeah, is that yeah. people are yeah. good, yeah. that they want to be friendly, they want to be helpful, they want to wave to people on the street and just say, hi, how are you? Except for guys living in compounds well, in Pakistan. You don't want that, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. But um, I think that if we just create the environment where people feel comfortable, and yeah. this is retail stores, this is restaurants, cafes, this is tourist establishments, this is visitors to our city, this is the government. If we just create the environment where customers feel comfortable, yeah. and welcome, they will act Imagine. comfortable and welcome, and they'll do things like you. They'll write nice letters. Now, I don't know anything about Disneyland because it was never uh, my interest to no. go there, but you have somehow figured out that these people are world experts on service, and you take people to Disney we, World or Disneyland? Or? Disneyland in this yeah, case. Yes. Um, the program is called Perfecting the Customer Experience yeah. and it is a three-day benchmarking program. We take yeah. it twice a year in April yeah. and in September. We take a group of five to seven people down to Disneyland. Jeff yeah. Kober, I mentioned yeah. earlier, is yeah. my partner in yeah. this. He's a facilitator. He's a previously with Disney Institute, which is ah. absolutely world-famous training institute. Yeah. And so Jeff brings the Disney side of things to the experience. Yeah. I bring the business side of things to the experience so that the people that we are there with, we help them see things give me, that give, are in plain sight. Give me two or three of them because we only have a couple of minutes left. Okay. Two or three of the highlights. For example, I mentioned the service standards. Yes. And their service standards are that number one, our guests will be safe. We will be courteous to our guests. Um, we will be helpful and we will be efficient. So it's, it's safety and security are the, the first two things. Right. So what we do is we go on an attraction such as we go through the Haunted Mansion yes. or we'll go through Pirates of the Caribbean. The, the set used the, to be the Haunted Mansion. Very good. Yes. We go through the Haunted Mansion and we will actually um, help them see how Disney has taken things like safety. We, here are six things they did for the safety of our guests. Oh. Here are six experiences that were for the um, uh, courtesy to our guests, the show that we're putting on, and the efficiency of moving people through the attraction. And once you start to understand that's what that is, that's why that was there, that's why this person did this, oh, I get it. As soon as someone starts to see that, they can start to apply it to their own business. I, I've just got a minute uh, left here, Ted. If I'm running a local shoe store in mm -hmm. Burnaby or whatever, or Vancouver, and I've got three or four outlets, mm -hmm. can I afford to send some of my employees down to the Disney Institute? You should be probably yeah. sending at least one. Yeah. Wh whomever is going to be your customer service lead, who's going to yeah. work on your customer uh, yeah. experience, whomever that lead is. It's worth the money. It's that sort of thing because then you can start to bring the ideas into your business. Yeah. None of these ideas require a Disney budget. This is not mega marketing stuff we're talking about. This is person to person. This is the way I treat you as a human being and yes. the way I keep track of your experience as you yes. come to what amounts to my home. Ted Topping, thank you. This thank has been you, great. David. <laughs> You're marvelous. You're such a jolly, sunny character. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, David. <laughs> All right, folks, that's it. That's our story about service for the moment. Uh, we must uh, say goodbye and remind you that next week, uh, Peter Ladner, who was almost the mayor, but not quite, he was a city councilor for many years, has written an almost incendiary and very interesting piece about rising property values in the Vancouver area. And it raises the thorny question, which many people are now discussing, should we limit foreign ownership of residential property in the Lower Mainland? Uh, we remind you, davidburner.com is the site to go to, and uh, we thank you, as always, for joining us here on Shaw Community Television, Cable 4. <laughs>